What's going on guys? John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're going to look at pagination for Django and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at pagination. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership to all my courses, videos, and books. Runtime fee is just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at pagination. So we have the beginnings of a very basic pagination down here, and we're going to make this look nicer as we go along. But in this video, we're going to get the basics here. So we've got, you can go to next page. It says page two of three. You can go to next. You can go to previous. You can go to last. You can go to first. All the stuff for pagination. And that's what we're going to look at in this video. So head back over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Get Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other Django Wednesday videos. So check those out if you haven't so far. So, okay, what do we want to deal with? Let's look back at the website real quick. We want to deal with our venues list. So we've got a, a decent little list here. Now, this is a small list. Usually when you're talking about pagination, you have dozens, hundreds, thousands of pages you want to paginate through. We've just got, it looks like six here, but that's enough to just sort of show you the mechanics of how to set this all up. So let's head back over to our code and let's go to our views.py and up at the top here, we need to import some stuff. Uh, let's go uh, import pagination stuff. That's the technical term for it, stuff. So we need to go from django.core.paginator, paginator, we need to import paginator. And this paginator is uppercase. This one is lowercase. So sort of keep that in mind. So now you do this on each individual view you want to paginate. So our specific page we want to paginate is the, I think, list venues view. So let's come down here, search venues, show venues, list venues. And right now you'll see we've got this order by and I just showed you this a few videos ago to show you how to randomize the order that these are listed in. So if we come back here and hit reload, every time we do, the order list is a little different. So we probably don't want that for pagination. We don't want the, the order of the things to be changing as we paginate through each page. So we need to remove that. So let me just come back here. I'm going to copy this whole line and paste it a second time. And I'm going to comment this out just so it's still in the code. So if you need to reference how to order by random, you can still look at that. But for now, I'm just going to take all this off. And in fact, we probably didn't even need to do that because we're not going to be using this at all anymore in just a second. So I'm going to save this, come back over here, hit reload a couple of times. Okay, so now it's not changing every time we hit reload. Like I said, we're not going to be using this setup anymore. So we really didn't have to do that. But I don't know, I thought I'd mention it anyway. So Okay, how do we use this thing? Well, it's actually not that hard. There's really just a few moving parts here. So let's uh, set up pagination. So I'm going to create a variable called p, short for pagination. And this one, you can call it anything you want, but p makes sense because we're not going to be using it for much. So I'll just call it p. And this is going to be a paginator, right? And we're going to create a paginator instance. And what do we want to paginate? Well, we want to paginate all of this stuff. Right, so I would just pass in here venue.objects.all. And now we need to give it a second argument. How many per page do we want to show? And we've only got six, so I'm going to put two per page, right? You know, that's not a lot. Normally you wouldn't want that. You would put like 20 per page or something, but we don't have 80 venues. We only have six. So I'm going to make this two venues per page just to show you how to do this. So those are the two arguments this takes your call to your database, your model we're calling the venue model. Now we can do this because up here at the top here, we imported venue from our models. And that of course is just, if we go to our models.py file, it's this venue model right here. So all of these things, name, address, zip code, phone, all of the stuff, right? So, okay, let's come back down here to our list venues. So we've set up our paginator. Now we need to keep track of the pages, right? So each time you click a link, to go to the next page, we need to sort of keep track of that, right? So I'm going to call this page, and this is just going to be the request dot get dot get two gets, and then we just want to pass in page. And this request is this guy up here. Remember, anytime somebody goes to a web page, they're requesting that web page, and they they want to get that web page, right? So we're get dot getting 
that page, right? So that's our page. So now we put this all together and I'm gonna create a new variable called venues. You know, before we called this venue list, you know, maybe we would call that venue list, but I'm just gonna call it venues. And this is gonna equal that P dot get underscore page and we wanna pass in page. So this P is our paginator. This page is the request basically. And okay, so now we've got this venues variable. We wanna pass it into the page instead of the venue list or in addition to, and I'll show you what I'm talking about in just a second. So let's go venues colon venues. So, okay, we've got, we can actually remove this in a minute and I'll show you that, but for now, this is fine. So let's go ahead and save this. So now we've got this venues thing. What exactly is all of this? What's all this information getting passed? So let's head over to our, uh, let's see, templates events venue.html. And this is our venues page. It lists all the venues. So down here, I'm gonna create a couple of line breaks and I'm just gonna print out venues and let's just see what the heck this thing is. So we can come back over here and hit reload and down here it says page one of three. Now that's sort of deceptive, that's what it is, but there's a whole lot of other stuff in this. So I'm gonna make a little list on the page just to sort of show you what all comes with this. So let's head back over here and I'm gonna do a line break here. And so we can go has previous, and let me just sort of copy this guy and a line break like that. And this is gonna be venues dot has underscore previous. So if we save this, come back over here, hit reload. Does it have previous? False. Well, what does that mean? Well, we're on page one, so there isn't a previous page. If we were on page three, this would be true. There would be previous pages that we could click to. So that's how you can keep track of whether or not there are previous pages or not. So pretty straightforward. The next one is has next, as you might expect. And this is just venues dot has underscore next. So let's save this and take a look at it. So has next true, why? Well, we're on page one now, right? This is page one and we know there's three pages, so there must be a next page. And that's as true. So that's how you keep track if there's a next page. So this keeps track of if there's a previous page, this one keeps track of if there's a next page. Important things for pagination, I think you'll agree. So next, let's see, we've got the current page. What is the current page? That's just gonna be venues dot number, right? I don't know, current would make more sense to me, but it's dot number. So let's head back over here, hit reload, current page one. Well, we know that's true because we're on page one. So that makes sense. And then finally, we can also look at number of pages. And that's just gonna be venues dot, a little bit different this time, paginator dot num underscore pages, right? So all of these are just venues dot something, venues dot something. This one's venues dot paginator. Oh, I misspelled paginator paginator dot the thing. So, okay, let's look at that. And this is probably gonna tell us three, right? Number of pages, three. We know that because right up here, it's page one of three. So those are sort of the, the things you can play around with. And, and these are all gonna be useful for building out our pagination. So, okay, that looks good. Now let's actually build out the HTML for the pagination. And this is gonna be a little complicated, but not too bad. So I'm just gonna, Sort of put a, a horizontal line here and a couple more line breaks just to separate this because I want to leave this on the page for now just so you can kind of see it, right? So, okay, we need to do some logic. So, so let's go if, and I'm just gonna real quick here end my if because I always forget to do it otherwise. So let's go if venues dot has underscore previous. So if there is a previous, then we want to be able to click back to that previous, right? So if there is, uh, let's go a href equals, and we're gonna need a couple of these, so I'll just paste these in here. And to use pagination, we, we take the URL and we stick a question mark at the end of it, and we call page equal, and let's set that equal to one. And now I wanna put little arrows pointing backwards, and to do that, we, we can use some HTML we call 
we call the ampersand L A Q U O. And that's like, that will be two little arrows like that. So this will be the first. This is a link to the very first page, right? Page one. We also want a link to whatever the previous one is. So let's go page. And, you know, here we set it equal to one. Now we want to set it equal to something else. We need to figure out programmatically. So we want the previous page. Well, that's going to be venues dot previous underscore page underscore number. And we didn't really talk about that up here because it's kind of hard to show it unless you have a previous page number, but that's how you get the previous page numbers, just venues dot previous page number. Okay. So this is going to point to, uh, let's say previous. Okay. Looks good. So let's go ahead and save this. And well, if we come back here, there won't actually be any different because we don't have a previous page yet. We could maybe come up here and go page equals two. Now we see this first and previous. If we click here, boom, it goes back to page one and there's nothing there. You'll notice up here, nothing has changed yet. We're gonna have to make a change up there in a minute to fix that. So, okay, not all that useful yet because we're not dealing with previous pages yet, but that's how you do the previous pages. Now we also then let's just say page and then let's go venues dot what number are we currently on? So we're going to go page one of and let's go the total number, which we know is venues dot paginator dot num underscore pages. Remember, we looked at that up here, the number of pages. So in the middle of our pagination, it'll say page six of eight or page 27 of 106 or page one of three in our case, right? So that's how we get that. And now finally, we need one more set of logic. So let's go if, and again, I'm just going to really quickly here end my if so I don't forget. So let's go if, and inside of here, we want venues dot has underscore next. So if there's a next page, we need to do something for that. And again, let's go a href. And we're going to want a couple of these. So here, let's go again, question mark page equals, and this is going to be venues dot next underscore page underscore number. So if we're on page one, we want to go to page two, the next page to get that we go next page number venues dot next page number, right? So, okay. And inside of here, we just want it to say, you know, next or next page or something like that. And then down here again, we want question mark page equals. And inside of here, let's go venues dot paginator dot num underscore pages, because again, we want here to go, let's say last. And then we want those little arrows pointing right because we want to go to the last one towards the right. <laughs> right. So that kind of looks like this these two arrows, right? So to do that with HTML, we just go, let's see, ampersand R A Q U O. Remember up here, we went L A Q U O for left arrows, left arrow quotes, I guess this is right arrow quotes, I guess, right? So, okay, that looks good. Let's go ahead and save that and our if. All right, so let's head back over here and hit reload and see all right, so here it says page one of three, we can go to the next or we can go to the last. So here, now we have page two of three, we want to go back to the previous one, we can, we could go forward to the third one, which is three, we can go back to the previous, we can go to the last, notice these two little arrows, those are the R-A-Q-U-O and the L-A-Q-U-O, right? And like I said, we could go now to the last and we could go to the first. So we got some basic pagination and that's it. And you notice when we click on one of these things, like I click next up here, it says question mark page three, we go to the first one question mark page one, right? So that's how it keep it's keeping track with the request. Remember the, the, the page request that we get tid back in the view. Okay. So that's cool. It looks like it works, but nothing up here is changing. Why is that? Well, back in the day when we first set up this page, we loop through this for venue in venue list, which we go back to our views.py file is this venue list. Well, we're not using that anymore. We're using everything through venues. 
And even though it looks like when we passed end venues, this stuff, when we look through all of this, let's see, uh, right here, this like venues, when we printed this to the screen, it was just that brackety thing right here, page two of three. But it also has all of our object stuff from the model as well, and we can access it. So to do that, we come up here to the top in our original loop from way back when. So for venue and venue list, instead of venue list, from now on, we just want to deal with venues, right? So we can go ahead and save that. Like I said, at the very beginning of this, we don't even need that venue list anymore. So now if we come back and hit reload, boom, page one, it just has two things, city park and area 41. If we go to the next page, boom, Las Vegas high school gym and downtown Vegas nightclub. If we go to the next page, boom, fifth venue and my place. And like everything, we can click on these and, you know, go to the page or we can update, you know, where we can delete if we want. I don't really want to, but uh, it all works now. And now you can get rid of this stuff too. You probably don't want it. I was just putting it on there to kind of show you how all this works, but uh, yeah, very cool. So in fact, let's just really quickly uh, da -da -da, come over to our page, come down here to where we did all this stuff. And I'm just gonna kind of do something like this to kind of get rid of it. It's just an H, it's sort of like an HTML comment. That's how you do it. This is an opening comment and a closing comment tag in HTML. So if we go ahead and save this, come back over here, hit reload, get, get all that stuff gets rid of there. It's still in the source code if you want to view this page. A view page source, you can come down here and still see that stuff if you want to play with it. Uh, so we'll leave it in there just for fun, but yeah, we got our pagination here. Now this doesn't look very cool, right? You're gonna want something much better. So if you go to get bootstrap, click on docs, come down here, click on components, they have their own pagination stuff. So we want something like this that looks much better or something like this, right? So we'll look at that in the next video. It's a little tricky to get this to work. But you know, we can now do that. We've got the functionality. Now we just need to do the CSS and the bootstrap stuff to make this look like this. And like I said, we'll look at that in the next video. But right now we're doing pretty good. Now, why is this only two things showing there? Well, that's because if you remember back in our views.py file, when we set up this P, our paginator, we designated we wanted two things. We could say three things, right? So we save this to three, come back over here, hit reload. Now there's three things. Now our, our pagination updates. There's only two pages because we only have six venues, right? Uh, we could change it to one per page if we wanted to be really crazy. So change that to one, come back over here, hit reload, boom, now it's one per page. And now our pages is two of six because there's six pages because we have six venues and we're doing one per page. And we can paginate three, four, five, you know, it's up here, page equals five, you know, page six, very cool. And we go all the way back to the first, we go all the way to the last, we get previous, Next, I don't know why I put lowercase n for next. <laughs> Let's update that. Uh, da, 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 venues, come down here. There we go. That looks probably better. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that's pagination. Seems a lot more complicated than it really is. There's really not a whole lot to it. And uh, pretty cool. So that's all for this video. If you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.